reinvent. Here we go. Multiple weeks, um, multiple nights. I, I happened to take the uh, Asia Pack schedule because my meeting schedule was so bad. I was doing these 9.30 p.m. at night meetings. Um, but it was good for me because I could kind of actually dial in and pay attention. You know, our Slack and our WebEx teams and our teams and our, our um, you know, messenger apps are, are blowing up all day long. And, and so sometimes it's nice at 930 at night to watch a replay and actually absorb some stuff. But let's just do like a quick like five by one minute rundown, Pat. I want to talk about Proton, Babelfish, um, IoT, uh, IO2, EBS, Block Express. Uh, connect and, and monitron panorama. So that's five topics. I'll start with Proton. Um, let's hit these up real quick, though, like one, um, like one uh, minute each. All right. So first is you know Proton, and Proton is effectively you know going to be um, the company's management system for its container and serverless applications. Um, the company you know basically is rolling this out as a way to manage, automate CI, CD pipeline. They're going to work in partnership with a lot of the companies that, that do these, the observability tools like co-pipeline, CloudWatch. Um, but what's really going on here is we're seeing the explosion of, of, of uh, hybrid environments. We're seeing, you know, the use cases grow and the scale grow. And, you know, so offering these great tools in ECS and EKS and doing these anywhere is only part of the battle. The other part of the battle for companies is how do I manage this? How do I manage the consistent upgrades, deployments, scheduling? And basically Proton is the company's answer. And by the way, a thematic part of the entire AWS was software. Nobody thinks about AWS as software. They're the IaaS player and Google and and, uh, and, and Azure and IBM, they're the soft. Well, truth be told, AWS made a very legitimate case at this particular event that their plans around software are very big. So Proton uh, managed pipeline for Kubernetes and serverless. Um, that was number one. Pat, I'll let you take the next two, starting with Babelfish. Yeah, Babelfish. Uh, real, so a little background here. Um, um, Microsoft has different pricing for SQL Server if you're an Azure customer versus if, if you're not. And I know that uh, AWS has brought this up uh, a bunch of times. So um, uh, and, uh, AWS's uh, answer to this is Babelfish. And Babelfish, if you know Babel, is essentially a universal translator. And what this does is allows customers to um, take applications written for Microsoft SQL Server and put them on top of and run directly on Aurora Postgres QL. And essentially that means uh, potential trouble uh, for, for uh, Azure, and but it opens up um, the uh, availability to, to move your applications off of Azure and, and onto AWS, probably not something that uh, uh, Microsoft is, is, is going to love, but Daniel, isn't competition great? <laughs> you, know, you know how I feel about that. Innovation is a uh, highest common denominator. You know, the more you push everybody, the more you're gonna get from everybody. And so, you know, game on is what I always like to say, as each one of these companies continue to innovate. So yeah, let's so we'll jump on yeah, to IO2. Yeah, uh, IO2 or EBS Block Express. So uh, last August, uh, they had launched IO2 Volumes, 100X the durability and 10X more uh, IOPS, so IE high performance. And now um, they brought out IO2 Block Express, 256K IOPS, 4K megabytes throughput, 64 terabytes of capacity, uh, which net net is SAN level performance in the cloud. So you can think of all the storage area network vendors out there uh, who are like, oh my gosh, this is probably not a good thing uh, for us. Now, I think where they're going to take this, Daniel, which I think uh, is even more interesting is Imagine this on an outposts. So uh, EBS Block Express IO2 literally would go head to head with uh, the uh, SAN providers. Okay. And that's Dell Tech. Um, that is uh, folks, um, uh, you know, who do a lot of the on prem business. So, anyways, uh, I thought that was. Uh, I thought that was really interesting because it opens up a brand new market 
uh, at per, at performance levels that AWS has never operated at before. Yep. And uh, let's jump over to Connect. So, uh, you know, you heard us talking about WebEx and Contact Center. Well, they're not the only game in town. There are many others. And uh, AWS has quietly built quite a little product with AWS Connect. And in this particular event, uh, the company rolled out a whole series of new features, very compelling. And by the way, you're starting to hear this software story come together, you know, talking about enriched AI, business intelligence, visualization tools. Pat, this stuff isn't on accident. Let's just be let's just be very clear. There's there's a thought process here. When I said the TAM might be all of IT, I wasn't kidding. Um, so five announcements. I'll just run down real quick. Connect Wisdom, which gives contact center agents um, you know a greater uh, visibility to information they need to solve problems in real time. They came out with what's called Connect Customer Profiles, which gives a unified profile. Remember that little CDP comment? Everybody's working in that direction. Yep. Each customer they can use to provide more personalized service. By the way, when Twilio bought Segment, a giant CDP upstart, case in point. Anyway, um, real-time contact lens uh, for Amazon Connect, which offers the capability for contact center managers to um, – basically have a bigger impact uh, over the interactions to be able to, you know, if there's an issue, it detects it more quickly and the, the person's able to respond to it. And then they uh, came out with Connect Tasks. You're hearing a lot about low code and RPA. Well, Amazon's in that space too. Um, and this is a tasks is basically something that can do automation, tracking, managing uh, task center activities for agents. And it's supposed to uh, increase productivity pep by up to 30%. And then the final one is Amazon Connect Voice ID, uh, which is real-time caller authentication using machine learning powered analysis, Pat. Back to you. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to do two. Uh, they don't actually belong together, but we only wanted to talk about five, but it's Monotron and Panorama. And put this in the category of AI and, and IoT. So Panorama uh, is, is an appliance, and there's also an SDK. So an appliance, an actual edge box, uh, that you can use uh, your existing cameras to do computer vision on for, let's say, quality control. If you're watching, you know, the widget pass in line and you want to make sure it it looks the same uh, or, you know, a candy bar has enough chocolate uh, on it. Otherwise, it gets it gets rejected. Uh, workplace safety when it comes to, hey, are people actually uh, social distancing? Uh, right. And and you can imagine uh, Amazon has a lot of experience in in computer uh, vision in their own um, uh, fa uh, not factories, but uh, uh, warehouses and distribution centers. And then you have Monotron, which is essentially using machine learning uh, and in an IoT base to do predictive maintenance. So put that sensor on, on that um, piece of machinery. And instead of having to schedule a person to come in every week uh, to come in and check it out, whether it's, it's working well or not, uh, it's using uh, algorithms to tell you uh, predictive based on historical uh, when you need to come in because you know there's a 99% that that uh, motor is going to go down and your auto manufacturing line is, is gonna go down. So big picture though for Monotron and Panorama is, is uh, uh, Amazon AWS not just putting out the tools to just have you create all of these things, but more of a, a PaaS type of, or even uh, when it comes to Panorama appliance, kind of a managed service for you to take something that they've uh, gotten to a certain place, and then for you to uh, customize that. 